Welcome to part three of the video tutorial series focusing on the reaction of organic functional groups. This section is going to um, delve a bit deeper into the oxidation and reduction of alcohols and carbonyl groups. Let's get started. Alrighty, so alcohols. Okay, we can do the generic symbol of ROH. And so if we look here, we know that alcohols can be classified as primary, secondary, or tertiary, depending right, on the carbon that's bearing the alcohol group. So depending on the number of R groups bonded to the carbon that is holding our alcohol group, we can classify the alcohols. So the alcohols, as we saw from the previous tutorial, they are the least oxidized. If carbon is bonded to oxygen and it's an alcohol, that would be the least oxidized form under these conditions. Now we'll see, we recognize here is our oxidation symbol. Notice that the R group is not going to change. And here's the carbon that we're interested in. And we see that initially with the alcohol, there's only one carbon to oxygen bond. However, as we go to the aldehyde, right, now we see that we have two carbon to oxygen bonds. And then we can continue the oxidation process all the way to the carboxylic acid, where now we have three carbon to oxygen bonds. So notice that nothing is happening to the R group. Um, I also want to point out about the hydrogens. So this hydrogen here, these hydrogens, right? We don't, how come I'm not talking about those? So these hydrogens here, right, do not consider So when we're talking about oxidation and reduction, we don't consider, oh, well that's not true. This one we sh this one's okay. Sorry about that. This one we can consider because it's bonded to carbon. It's this one here and this one here. Why don't we consider those? We don't consider those because th are those hydrogens bonded to carbon? No, right? So we do not consider for this alcohol hydrogen and the carboxylic hydrogen, we don't, we don't look at those hydrogens because, right, they're bonded to oxygen. Okay, now let's go through secondary alcohols, right? So with secondary alcohols, there's only one possible oxidation product. We can go from one carbon oxygen bond to two. And the reason for that is because carbon can only form four bonds. And the, R, the bonds between carbons, right, that's our carbon backbone or our spine. We're not going to be disrupting that. And so then finally, if we look at tertiaries, based off that, we can see that we, right, cannot be oxidized. We have to be able to, to oxidize the carbon. We have to be able to lose these hydrogens. So notice, as long as there's a hydrogen bonded to the carbon, it can be oxidized. But here, right, there are no um, H's bonded to this carbon. right, to the alcohol carbon. Okay, so that's a really important thing to understand. And then um, a great reaction that covers um, most of these concepts would be the ethanol metabolism. And so we looked at it briefly in the other video, but now we'll look at it in terms of the series here. Um, right, so if we start with ethanol, we have a primary alcohol. And so 
if this undergoes a gentle oxidation, then it will go to the aldehyde. And so, or, and then if we oxidize the aldehyde, it will go all the way to the carboxylic acid. And, or we could go directly from the alcohol to the carboxylic acid if we used a strong oxidizing agent. All right. And so, um, and this, um, this aldehyde formation is one of the compounds that's associated with that, that, cram that crummy um, hangover feeling from alcohol consumption. So briefly, to review then, right here, right, that when we look at the carboxylic acids, we would consider those the most oxidized form. Right? And then remember, oxidation and reduction, you can think of those as complements to each other. So if the carboxylic acid is the most oxidized, it would be the least reduced. Oops. And likewise, if we consider the alcohols the least oxidized, they would be the most reduced. So you want to start thinking about oxidation and reduction in this complementary way, that the extremes will always be opposites. And so now we'll do a, a, quick, a quick review of reduction, um, which will just be the, we'll just flip this oxidation around. Alrighty. So when we talked about oxidation, we focus on the alcohol. Alcohol is becoming oxidized since they're the least um, since they're the most reduced. With carbonyls, right, we recognize our carbonyl group here, and we're going to only focus on aldehydes or ketones. So in the reduction of, oh, I guess, okay, well, or with, we'll do carboxylic acids too, right? Um, and the, they're right here, so. We'll also look at carboxylic acids because of primary alcohols. So basically, if you understand oxidation reactions, then you, you really understand reduction reactions already. So let's test your understanding. So look at this diagram based off the previous page. Classify the functional groups. The carboxylic acid's been done for you. So think about the relationship between the functional groups in terms of oxidation and reduction. If you get an alcohol, let's go ahead and classify it as primary, secondary, or tertiary. Okay? So the carboxylic acid is the most oxidized. Our symbol here shows us we're doing a reduction. So we'll, the R group doesn't change. So what are we going to do? So for the first step here, right, we have three carbon to oxygen bonds. So we'll reduce that to only two. And it will become an aldehyde. So we'll represent the reducing hydrogen in green. And then we could do a further reduction. And remembering that the R group is not changing and focusing on the carbon here. And so now we go from three bonds to two bonds to one bond. And then we've had two hydrogen atoms added to the carbon through our reducing agent. All right. So here you have the clue, this one filling in the blanks. So here's a second pathway. Um, oh, let's finish this one, though, before we jump on, right? So our carboxylic acid reduced to an aldehyde, and then our aldehyde reduced to an alcohol, and there's only one R group bonded to the alcohol carbon, so it's a primary alcohol. All right, so now that we've finished that one, and we can say, right, so this is the least oxidized, 
And this was a reduction pathway, so as we followed the reduction down, they be the compounds became more and more reduced. Okay. So here's our second series of reactions, and we see that there are two R groups bonded to the, carb the alcohol carbon. So we would describe this as a secondary alcohol. And here we see reducing conditions. So how, what, what functional group can be reduced to produce a secondary alcohol? Well, we know the R groups are going to remain unchanged. And sandwiched between them is this carbon atom. And so it's going to, right, a ketone reduces to a secondary alcohol. So you can see that this, um, this chart is just the reverse. And then, of course, we haven't shown the tertiary alcohols because tertiary, tertiary alcohols do not undergo, um, cannot undergo oxidation or reduction. So remember that the goal of studying all these reactions is to get to biochemistry. So we will look at um, NAD plus and NADH in much closer detail in the future, but even with just the little bit of information we have so far, let's look at the question. In a biochemical reaction, reduction of carbonyls, right? So that's adding hydrogen atoms to carbonyl groups. So would you expect that to be carried out with NAD plus? or NADH? Well, it's definitely going to have to be NADH, right? Because the, the reducing agent, right, it needs, right, th this will be our reducing agent because it needs to have a hydrogen atom to donate. So this, uh, and this hydrogen atom would be donated to the carbonyl group to reduce the carbonyl. So we will be, we'll be looking at that much more closely in the future, but I, I think it's helpful to show the context of where we're headed with biochemistry to help you link your learning to the organic functional groups to the biochemistry. So just to wrap up this section then on oxidation, um, we hear a lot about antioxidants and how important they are to our health. And so oxidation reactions are critical. That's how we, one of the main ways we produce energy in our body. But not all oxidation reactions are beneficial. Oxidation reactions can form free radicals. So a free radical is where we have an unpaired electron very unstable. Okay, another way to describe it is as an odd valence electron. So that's two ways to describe the same thing. The important thing to know, though, is that radicals, right, they're um, highly reactive. And, um, and so that means they're unstable because they're, they're highly reactive, and so they react with our biological molecules in a destructive way, right? So they're destructive to our biological molecules. Okay, so antioxidants are substances that can trap this unpaired valence electron and basically put it on a timeout so we can prevent them from damaging our biomolecules. And so um, it, there's plenty of research out there that shows that oxidation from free radicals is linked to biological aging. Because basically the aging process is the degeneration of our biochemistry. So it's very interesting to look at, um, at what the common um, structural features of antioxidants. And many of them use the aromatic benzene ring to trap the radical. So let's remember benzene. 
So it's the six-membered ring with alternating double bonds, and we can draw the bonding arrangement this way. So then it's very common to simply show it as a ring. And now we can see that this is a really good representation because those alternating double bonds in the benzene ring, they form a force field of electrostatic repulsion around the hydrocarbon ring. All right, so this force field of electrons Um, it is, it protects the ring from reactions. And that's why benzene rings, that's what creates the stability. Okay, so, um, so we will see that many antioxidants, we'll just use vitamin um, e as an example, notice there's a benzene ring, and not only is it common to see benzene rings, but also, right, what functional group? When we have an alcohol group on a benzene ring, what do we call that, right? We call that a phenol. And so what happens is that that radical, with its unpaired electron, it, that unpaired electron can get trapped in the force field of the, um, the double bond rings forming, right? So the, the aromatic ring traps the radical, traps that lone electron. And so when, if you start studying about antioxidants, you'll often hear polyphenolics or polyphenols. And so, like fresh fruits and vegetables and unprocessed grains have these polyphenolics, and their o antioxidant property comes from the stability of the, um, the electron ring above and below the plane. All righty, so that concludes um, this tutorial on organic oxidation re reduction, focusing on the alcohols and carbonyl groups and then a little bit in there um, to make us um, more educated consumers and aware of our health, the role of phenols in um, antioxidants. Please take some time now to work a few homework questions to reinforce your understanding.